Black Watch Radio uh, Rona Report. We have Jay Janae in the house. Jay Janae Food. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm relaxed. I'm cozy. And I'm, I'm chatting with you all. And you home. I'm That's home. Awesome. Yes, baby. I'm home. That's what's up. All right. So, okay. So you're home and we all are home. Or we all are in a building somewhere, <laughs> you know, and we are relegated there because of what we're going through, COVID-19. So how does it affect your professional life? And, um, okay, JJ Food, what is that and how has it affected that? So JJ Foods is a health conscious food company. Um, I pretty much started the company in 2018. I started off just literally blogging on my Instagram page, kind of like showing my food adventures. One thing led to another and I kind of started vending. Somebody asked me if I wanted to vend one time and that kind of turned into me taking things to a whole nother level with JJ Foods and also becoming a lot more health conscious because at first I was just kind of making regular meals with like chicken and things of that nature. But a shift happened and um, I stopped eating meat and yeah, now we're here and I'm, the focus is to pretty much change the way um, we as people see and taste food. So um, during this time, I was just kind of actually rocking and rolling, getting some new clients, doing some meal prep. And that was going very consistent. But as soon as the uh, Rona kind of came through, that mm-hmm. slowed down uh, tremendously. And um, I haven't done it since. Mm-hmm. And also, I was supposed to actually do a career day at an all-girls charter school right like the Friday before everything kind of really, really took off. Um, when we were still able to kind of go to the stores and still kind of in that normal flow of what we're used to, I was mm-hmm. supposed to be doing the career day. I was very excited for it. I uh, made up some menu cards for the kids um, and I was ready to and prepared. So that's pretty much where that kind of has affected um, what's going on. And also a lot of uh, events got canceled. You know, mm-hmm. I was going to be doing a lot of springtime events, you know, music sure. festivals, things of that nature. So. Sure, sure. So you do a lot. Of, so a lot of what you do is vending. Yes. At this point, a lot of what I do is definitely vending. That's how okay. I get out. You know, that's how people find out about me. And that's how I've kind of been moving and operating and really growing JJ Foods is vending. And you're vending health conscious. So that means vegan. Um, what? Exactly. It's health kind of organic. I mean, what exactly? Vegan, vegetarian, pretty much okay. just showing people that um, not so much as the process, the overly processed fast foods. So introducing people to more fresh ingredients, like as opposed to you maybe making ramen at home with the traditional ramen packets that we get that are very, very kind of inexpensive and cheap and, and high in sodium. I could, you know, possibly teach someone how to make that at home and use healthier ingredients and not use as much sodium or, you know, pretty much make that for one of my clients and customers and give them a different way of having ramen, but still having the ramen, but just a different experience of it. Got it. Got it. So it's applying like um, very health conscious movements into regular diet and what people are actually eating. Because I see some of your stuff on uh, Instagram. I'm like, okay like it because I don't eat meat neither so okay I like that I like all of I like everything you put in together I'm funny with the vegetables too so I eat the <laughs> same vegetables sister same vegetables but okay. at least I get them in you know what, what vegetables same. do you eat <laughs> I kale um I'm I'll hold on, hold on I want to ask the question of another um another way Janae if you don't mind sure okay. ask about what types of salads she eats. What types of salads? Okay. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't listen to him. Okay. Listen, <laughs> I eat kale and asparagus and um, I eat a, uh, what else do I eat? Uh, spinach. So those are like the stuff I eat all the time. All the time. Um, what's the little cabbages? What they call Brussels. Brussels sprouts. I oh, do yeah, the Brussels. I just got into them. So, and I'm, you know, I'm eating cabbage now. So I'm eating like the same stuff. I've never eaten a salad. So that's so, that's <laughs> what he's alluding to. You've <laughs> never eaten a salad? I'm, in my whole life. Oh, and wow. A salad. A salad. That's no deep. Salad. No, you know. That I know. Because I don't <laughs> like texture. I don't like crunch. I don't unless like Unless it's in a chip. Unless, yeah, unless it's chip and cookies, sister. So I don't like, but she might. I'm surprised that she's not eating one right now. She <laughs> like, 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 
<laughs> and stuff like that. So I don't like that crunch and onions. So I've never had a salad. So I eat around that that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like one of those crazy kind of um, good, good eaters. I eat the same stuff and stay right in my low lane. I'm good with that. Okay. So, I mean, but I always like to look at food and um, I do one day I'm going to eat a salad. That's that's one thing I'm going to teach myself. Yeah, I'm going to teach myself to eat a salad. So that's going to happen before. One day's for real high well, aspirations. Well, that's one of my aspirations, Jay. Well, well, that's a challenge to me because maybe I can figure out a unique way to make a salad for you and present it to you in a way where it's like, okay, well, when you try it, hopefully you might like it. I see that's I, what I'm here for. I love that about you, sis. Stand up and make make yourself <laughs> seen. I like that. Yeah, if you can do that, and I will eat. You'd be my best friend. Okay. Uh, you but, and I want some something leafy like um, spinach or um, kale. I don't want no. Uh, well, kale is kind of raw. Is very bitter. I eat it raw too, but it's bad, bitter. But like a spinach, or you gotta a, learn how to eat that bitter herb. You gotta learn how to deal with the bitter. Yeah, that bitter is that thing bitter. So, gotta learn to love it. Yeah, I do. I love it. I have to. I mean, but I, what it does for you, you can't is you can't even enumerate what what the stuff does to the energy that it brings to you. So, um, sure. exactly. So, food should be like a a gas that you put in the car. For if sure, food is making you sleep, and it's making you lethargic, and you know. That's not what food is supposed to do. It's supposed to get in you and be electric, electric foods. And so um, that's how I'm trying to go for it from henceforth. So back to like the Rona. All right. So professionally, it's kind of stagnated your growth when it comes to um, your vending and, of course, your meal prep and actually clients because people are kind of doing their own food right now. Is that what's happening? Yeah, you know, and I, I, you know, I don't take it personally, of course, and I understand. I think, you know, with this going on, it also puts me in another position in a place to really kind of look at things differently. Mm-hmm. Like now I'm going to uh, provide a contact free delivery service for those who are interested in still having my food. If, as long as you're in the Baltimore area or you're in surrounding areas and I can get to you, we can still get you healthy food. So just actually doing things a lot differently. I'll probably be doing some online, like cooking, cooking videos, probably making like a recipe book to share Mm -hmm. and just giving more resources, even though, even if we can't be in the physical, it's still ways to reach people and to use this platform like Instagram to do what I need to do. You know, you're right. I mean, this, if anything, it has made us could be very creative with technology, whereas we would depend more on our going out and being intimate with people and going, you know, and touching people and talking to them. This makes you really go into your, your toolbox and be like, listen, I got to, you know, I got to make some stuff up so that's attractive to people on the outside who I can't, who can't really, they can see me, but they don't really can't feel me. So you got to be creative now. And it's, it's, it's great because it gives you another stream when things stop popping again you got this stream that you created you know what i mean for sure and it, so, it's not bad and it also made me think a lot about even prior to this happening i was very much so i'm i'm very much a type of person who i challenge my thinking at times so i had actually purchased a book from ollie's i don't know if you guys are familiar with ollie's the bargain store yeah the bargain outlet Yes, I have one. I live in the uh, White Marsh area, so I have one in my area. So I actually brought a book. Oh, that's on... a pretty Arlie's. That's a White Marsh Arlie's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With apostrophe S. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> but I have found a book in there. It was called How to Survive in the Wild. And um, mm-hmm. it just made me think, like, oh, even Lord. now, going back to, like, where we are now, like, how we need to go back to the basics and kind of be our own resources. Like, yes. knowing how to pretty much provide and like supply your own water or plant your own food. Your own or food chain. Yes. That, we, like these things are very necessary and also very. thinking about money differently. Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, so I think it also puts things in that space right there. Like, yo, you know, if something really was to go down and the things that you are very comfortable with left you, how would you survive in the wild? Could you really <laughs> like do it? Are you healthy enough? Are you physically healthy enough? You know Thank what I'm saying? You. Sis, you are hitting it. That <laughs> is it. It's not even can you survive? Can you even walk two miles, shorty? Yeah. You know, do you have the wherewithal to even survive with in, in, in the wild? Just be there, not even being able to raise your own food, hunt food, whatever. We don't, we don't have a clue. 
we got to, we definitely need to farm and raise some more of our own vegetables and our own meat. That's the only way I can see me even eating meat. I would have to freaking raise it. No one. You would have to know him. Yeah, we have to be, I have to name that John. I'm like, yeah, this, is, this is Gina on my plate. <laughs> so that'd be the only way that I think that I can particularly put some meat in my body that I know that I've actually cultivated. But we definitely need to um, look into that. And this gives, this is a great chance for us to um, do some reorganizing of our thoughts because they can't even call, even we're in this system, this situation, they can't close the stores because we can't eat. Yeah, that's deep. That's the yeah, crazy part. That, that that's people, the essential workers aren't medical personnel. They are essential as very essential. Please, I would not say that because that's what I do. But definitely what's more essential is these food, these people at the grocery store, the people collecting trash. The, the, that is so essential right now. And no one, who would have thought? Mm. You cannot close the grocery store because no one farms. Mm. That that is that's unbelievable, and that's 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 where we are. We got to look at how we move in. We because everything that we need is someone else provides for us, from education to drawers. It's crazy. Yeah. It. It. Wow. Yeah. It makes you just really think and sit back and be like, yeah, you know, you definitely got to reevaluate and take advantage of this time. I think this is a really good time to reset and strategize and just be like, yo, I want to come back with a vengeance and. Yeah, you know, be stronger and smarter. Word right there, reset. That's my word right now. This thing is like when you want Pac Man and he didn't do what you supposed to do, <laughs> start his ass over. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that that's where we at. We in the mood, start over. And I just think that we have to be committed after this to 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 be better and to do things differently. I mean, we don't have a choice. I don't think the new norm. This is a new normal, right? Chair. What you think? Uh, I definitely think this is a new normal. I don't. I don't think things are ever going. I don't even know if the normal before was really normal, but <laughs> but but even now, like the the change after this, the impact that this is going to have on the the economy and just people and just it's it's a lot of things that are going to be affecting that will never be the same again. So yeah, you definitely got to prepare for whatever is supposed to be coming, you know, and the unknown. Exactly. And what know? do we even remember anymore? Do we even remember how it was? We're so lost in this space. Mm. And we know we're going to a new space. Can we even remember how it used to be? I know we're going to say back in the day in about a year. You know, what we, we used to do, and then that's over. So I don't know. I, I, I wonder sometimes, I said to myself the other night, Janae, I was like, listen, why was I chosen to live through this? Mm. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. there's so many people who died in between let's say 1918, when they, which was a pandemic, the Spanish flu, and this pandemic that we're experiencing is 2020. So we're talking almost 100 years, right? Wow. So within those 100 years or 50 years or 70 years, people have lived and died. They've lived their whole life, 70 years, 80 years, and never, you know, experienced this pandemic, what we're experiencing. So I'm like, why am I here? And why am I experiencing this? And what is this for my life? You know? Because no, we could have, we could not experience it. You could have died before, or not even been born yet. It's it's um it's a re. I think we're all here for reasonings, and we have to look at it in so many ways. I'm, I mean, I might be getting too deep. So, what do you think about that? <laughs> oh no, you're not getting deep. You're right up my alley. <laughs> go on, let's go uh, in the alley. <laughs> no, we, I, I feel you 110. percent I've been asking myself the same questions and just really questioning and saying too, like honestly, how can we at this point be of service to everyone? You know, even you right now, even us doing this, this is this is a service. You know, what I'm saying because people mm-hmm. get to hear this conversation, they get to relate, they get to connect. So, you know, this within yeah, it itself, be therapeutic. You yeah, right. mm-hmm. this is powerful within itself. Um, but I just think that we have to think outside of ourselves and not be so um, selfish, because I feel like when we were kind of in the old norm, mm-hmm. it's a very selfish type of life because you're sure. just focused on every day. Like, this is what I have to do for myself and my family. But you're not thinking outside of that context. You're just thinking that the focus is just. I got to keep doing this and that and the third so that I can pay my bills. Yep. That's like now shifted, you know, like that's gone. Yeah, it's that's gone. gone. Can't pay nothing. Let's be clear. <laughs> Get down somewhere. <laughs> it's, I mean, everything that we thought was how it's supposed to be. No, you know, no one would say that all of these people could be home working. 
teleworking is the is everything now. I mean, everything has shifted. If you stay home from work, you 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 scared. Now no one's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I don't know. So as we digest these movements, um, I think the human spirit has to adjust to. We we need to settle down and and just think about our lives also. For and, sure. and get ready for the next hustle because it's coming and I'm ready. Yeah, you gotta be thinking generational wealth and thinking Real beyond. Cool. You gotta I think people also have to think about creating a platform outside of things being so controlled by out uh, like third party sources. Like so like just creating, you know, really need based businesses, like people who are in need based businesses right now. Uh, in certain types of fields and stuff might not be as affected or if they kind of have their own database and mm-hmm. they can kind of control everything outside of what's going on and still have a way to kind of consistently make money. I think that's something too to focus on, like, you know, really just thinking outside the box and always being able to kind of reach whoever's around you and not losing that connection in a sense. And that's what we kind of thought of a black box. Like we wanted to, be able to compile this and compile what people were feeling. We didn't really want to be scientists and talk about the virus and how people should react to that. We want to talk about real feelings and real reactions. So it was, that was the reasoning for, for doing something like this. But again, what you said was so amazing because our platforms are Facebook and Instagram and these platforms control your, your content. For sure. And they are controlling what we're talking about when it comes to this virus. So the Rona report is not being pushed out there. So we have to do it. So I'm saying that to everyone that um, is actually giving a re- listen, share it with your folks, share it with everyone. Let's get it out because the people are stronger than these systems. Mm-hmm. These systems can't control you, but, but so long, but the voice of the people is, is, is it's like um, water to a rock. It will slowly erode it. Mm-hmm. And so voices are so important and then they have to be suppressed sometimes because then you get the, the real depiction of what's going on. But these are, we can continue to, of course, do these reports, but we need, like you said, these third party um, platforms that we're using, they can control what we listen to. Yeah, you're right. You're Even us creating cool. this is being controlled. So we have to push it. We have to push people to the website. We have to push, push the Rona reports to our own family and our own friends. So we can get real voices in this significant time because it's important to put this on wax. You know, 10, 20 years from now, your grandbaby will say, that's my, that's my mom. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> real talk, you know, and, and talking about something that they might never experience, mm-hmm. you know. And um, so it's, it's very relevant for us to do some new stuff when we come out of here. Definitely. So in a, when it comes to the food business, well, how do you want to impact it after the, when the, when the gates are open and they say we free, <laughs> how do you want to impact the food business with your, with JJ Janae food? Uh, well, first and foremost, JJ Janae foods is, you know, always for the community and just being in the places that we're needed. Um, and also like, I want to start a mobile, like a mobile cafe, honestly, and be able to travel and get to people like no matter what, even if people can't get to me, because I'm realizing a big, Part of the thing with people is that they sometimes they can't get to these places or get to the healthy foods. So like, Mm -hmm. how can we get to them or how can we show them how to get to their resources? You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. even if I show like a younger person who takes the bus, maybe I could show you a bus route of how to get to your local organic store to buy a few different little bits of organics or like get to a little market Mm. so you can actually pick up these things and experience it. It just because that's all that it is. You know, to me, I feel like once people kind of have an opportunity to get some fresh ingredients and they have an understanding of how to kind of like use these elements together or bring out the best qualities and whatever that they're cooking, then it changes and it's going to shift their perspective of how they see food or how they taste it. Mm, that, that is the truth, because the more it's seasoned, you be like, that thing good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it is, you know, when you. And that's good to be able to bring the food to the people and the good food because there's so many food deserts in Baltimore. So that that, that is amazing. So um, we're at the part of the interview where, we, you know, we leave something with the people. It's called The Last Will and Testament, LWT. So we want to leave, you to leave something inspirational. You might have a, a nasty talent, 
drop some lines on us. We don't know. So something that will inspire the folks, give us that jewel from Jay Janet. My biggest jewel that I'm going to give is that you have to you have to find your purpose and you have to live in it. That is that is truly freedom. I live by that. I stand by that. And, you know, don't let the world, you know, dictate who you are. You know, be be free and be you. I know it's very cliche, but that's that's real words. Mm, real talk. Be you. Awesome. G. Thank you so much, Janae. Jay Janae. Yeah. <laughs> for sharing all of your experiences with us and giving us some really important information about the way, one of the most important ways to take care of yourself in a situation like this, which is through food. So we really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. Thank you all for having me. And I appreciate this conversation. Looking forward to the final product. Yeah. And speaking of that final product, if you're listening now, you're hearing the final product. Um, you can find this and all of our other conversations for the Rona Report and other episodes of Black Box Radio at blackboxradio.com. That's B-L-A-K-B-O-X-X-R-A-D-I-O.com. You can also find Black Box Radio on Instagram and on Facebook at Black Box Radio. Beautiful. Well, um, today we, um, I'm second with G saying we really appreciate you and um, thanks for telling us and talking to us about um, how your business is faring in this virus and how you're adjusting to it. And um, we appreciate you. We really do. Thank you all again. Um, yeah, this has been, this has been wonderful. I'm, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to do this at this point in so. time. And uh, when you come in studio, we need some of that um, the meals. Oh, we we gonna we gonna cook on the spot. Yeah, we come in, we yeah, come in live and direct. We come in come bring the salad. Bring the salad. Bring the mushrooms to us. <laughs> Got bring you. The salad. <laughs> bring the salad too. Oh, okay. Got you. The salad. Whatever. <laughs> 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 this is the Rona Report <laughs> four three twenty. We've had Jay Janae food. This is Black Box Radio. We out. Peace.